God has got a plan and a purpose for you. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. And even for this Wednesday, he's got a plan and purpose for you. Thank you for tuning in to Hope Today. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with my mighty, mighty co-host, Amy Schaefer. Hey, Tom. <laughs> it is a mighty, mighty powerful Wednesday. Today, we are talking about one of my favorite topics ever, supernatural dreams in this hour will help us become perfectly aligned with God's empowerment, his will, his timing, his eternal purposes. I believe that as you read this book by DeMonte Edmonds, your faith for greater destiny shifting dreams will increase. We are going to unpack everything, Tom, right. about dreams, God-given dreams, pizza dreams, warning <laughs> dreams, prophetic yes, dreams. Yes. It's going to be exciting. It, it is. And, you know, it's in the scriptures. Uh, it's in the scriptures. People were led by dreams. Yeah. You know, Joseph was and, and uh, you know, uh, Jesus' father, Joseph was. Uh -huh. I mean, there's just so many that they were led by dreams. And so we can't discount that and say, oh, well, that's kind of an area I don't really, you know, it's for, for the Bible times, not for today. No, it's for today. God is still moving that way. And I'll be really interested to, to ask Demonte, like guidance, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. Cause it seems like that's where a lot of people get a lot from dreams. At a pastor's conference a, a couple of weeks ago, one of the speakers was talking about uh, Joseph in the prison with the dreams that the cupbearer had and that the baker had. And he said, he was just talking about the church today. And when Joseph interpreted those dreams, one was going to live and he had to tell one he was going to die. Yeah. And he said, in this culture, we were so anti like warning or concern. It's all just, you're, you're good. It's yeah. so, which, you know, I'm, I'm big on the encouragement factor. Yeah, me too. I like but that. But there is a warning at times that you have, and we have to speak the truth yeah. in love. I think that God can warn us through dreams as well. And I just want to make uh, our prayer line available to you. We always have prayer partners standing by. So if you need prayer today, if you need some someone to go to the throne room of God with you, then you can call the number on the screen and one of our prayer partners will do that. They'll pray and they'll believe with you and we'll believe that God is going to lead you to wherever you happen to be. So avail yourself of that. Amen. God loves to communicate with us in a number of ways. It can be through a sermon we hear at church, a song on the radio, or even an encounter with a stranger at the grocery store. Another particular way can be through our dreams that we have at night. I love it. Joining us now to help us discern how God can speak to us through dreams is prophetic leader DeMonte Edmonds, and he's written a new book called The Supernatural Dimension of Dreams, Understanding How God Works While You Sleep. Wow, DeMonte, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you for having me on, and I'm excited to be with you and your audience. When did this subject, topic of dreams, just grip you so hard that you wanted to write an entire book about it? Well, ever since I was a child, the Lord always gave me dreams. Dreams were a part of my life. And uh, just coming into adulthood, the Lord's multiplied those dreams. And he uses dreams in so many areas, guidance, correction, a wisdom, uh, just revealing himself and his heart to me. And so it just seemed natural to write a book on the supernatural dimension of dreams. Do you believe that God still speaks in dreams today? We know he did in the Old and the New Testament. Is it relevant for today? It's highly relevant. And you know, I get dreams, my wife has dreams, my children have dreams, our friends have dreams. Every day I'm getting emails and inboxes with people telling me their dreams and seeking for insights and answers and interpretations. And then as well, there are people that are not necessarily Christian but they have talked about the dreams that they've had. And I believe God's even given some of them dreams like the Bill Gates and uh, different people of that type of caliber. Even Steve Jobs, they had dreams that influenced their destiny and the direction of their life that have impacted millions. Tell the dream that you have in your book about Google, like Google that we use a million times a day. Yes, yes, so the founder of Google actually had a powerful dream 
uh, about this ability to have this kind of search engine type of functionality. And um, it reminds me of Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla, who uh, who was, I don't want to say the rival, maybe the competitor of Edison, one invented AC uh, electricity, the other DC electricity, but he had all of these inventions and a lot of them came through visions and dreams. The th same thing happened with the, uh, the founder of Google. In a dream, he saw the potential of what could be done with the internet and connecting all these computers together in this powerful search engine. So Devontae, how can we know that our dreams are from God? I've certainly, I'm one of those that does remember a lot of my dreams. Usually it's uh, not anything that I think is a leading from God. How do you know when it is? So a few things that I look for. Number one, I look for the impact that it leaves on my soul. Usually a dream from God that's not a pizza dream or you know, some type of dream that's just coming from the business of life is going to leave an impact on your soul. Number two, it's very important to have a working knowledge of the word, to spend time in the word of God, because often he will speak in a way uh, that matches the word of God, even symbolism from the word of God. And then thirdly, I look for uh, if it's encouraging me, if it's inspiring me, if it's uh, causing me to draw closer to God. Because even a dream that's not talking about anything spiritual, I'll wake up and you know what I want to do? I want to go before God and pray and say, Lord, what was that all about? Reveal it to me. Give me answers about that dream. So dreams that come from God also provoke you to seek him. How do we remember our dreams? I know you have a lot of great practical steps in your book, but you know, say we remember one tiny thing. How do we handle that? Okay, so the first thing that I tell people about remembering dreams is to set your heart and mind that you can remember. There are some people that they've had so many dreams that they've forgotten. They don't believe that they can remember. You have to be intentional about remembering your dreams. Secondly, have an expectancy that the Holy Spirit is going to bring it to your remembrance. Then thirdly, make provision. Have a, a notepad about your bed with a pen or pencil or, or maybe have your voice notes ready in the morning. Uh, so the first thing you do when you wake up after you bless the Lord for waking up is try to recall the dreams that you've had. Okay, so you mentioned pizza dreams earlier. You know, you're watching the news at night, you know, you're getting in an argument with something, you're concerned about something. How do we process that as far as like when we're going to sleep, we're going to bed, it's pretty high probability we're going to dream about something that we're troubled about. Yeah, that's that's highly true. Actually, in the uh, the Bible, it says through the business of life, a multitude of dreams comes. But when something is um, causes you to be emotionalized, mm -hmm. it goes into your heart. And so what happens, right. one of the things that happens during sleep, memories and emotions are being processed through different parts of the brain. And so your, your, your mind is actually trying to put these memories and emotions and process them and filter them into different parts of your, your brain. And so sometimes these dreams will filter over. So one of the things the Bible says is where, well, is to be angry, but sin not. And there's a saying, you can be angry, but don't go to bed angry. Don't go to bed upset because normally what happens then is bitterness sets in. So if you have anger, if you're upset, try to make it a habit before you go to bed take it to the Lord and actually deal with those areas and to give you peace. Because what will happen, you'll toss and turn and you'll be dreaming about the person that upset you, the thing that upset you. And so make it a practice never to go to bed angry, upset, or troubled. Yeah, don't let the sun go down on your anger, right? Uh, that's, yes, don't let the sun go down on <laughs> your anger. That's something my wife and I have tried to um, <laughs> uh, practice, and we've been pretty good at, uh, at doing that. But let me ask you about the, the dark side here for a little bit, about nightmares. Um, you know, it's something that we, you know, we can't ignore. When I was younger, I used to have nightmares, uh, not often, but often enough. Uh, lately, I haven't seen that. What, what do we do when we wake up all scared and, and worked up over a nightmare? And what role does spiritual warfare have in this? Well, that's amazing that you mentioned when you were younger, you used to have more nightmares. Myself as well, I had many more when I was younger. Uh, one of the things, if you get full of the word of God and you build, build your faith, you, you'll find that your faith will become a shield for you in the spirit realm, even when you're not awake. That's good. 
And so just getting full of God, getting full of his spirit, spending time in prayer will decrease the nightmares. But when they happen, don't let the enemy just torment you. Rise up and take authority. The other night, my daughter, she came and climbed into the bed with my wife and myself. She had this dream about a lady looking at her with a mean, ugly face. You know what we're teaching the kids? Take authority. Use the name of Jesus. Just don't allow the nightmares to happen and to torment you. You have power through the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, and the word of God. So take authority and rebuke the enemy that's trying to sow seeds in the night. Okay, what about the person that they can't remember any dreams? They want to dream so bad from the Lord. Is there any way to activate those God-given dreams in your life? Yeah, so what's funny, many people that have read my book, they begin to say all of a sudden they're dreaming. Um, my wife's best friend, she's already a dreamer, but she said she read the book and her dreams just like three, four dreams a night for the next few days. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that you can do is just simply uh, read my book, read other people's books on prophetic dreams, the right people, spirit-filled uh, writers. But as well, ask the Lord, just simply ask. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. And so if you begin to ask, and I, I, I tell people to do this as a practice, ask the Lord. And if you don't get a dream the first night, say, well, Lord, I thank you that you're going to speak to me tonight. If you don't get it the second night, say, Lord, you didn't speak the last two nights in dreams, but this night is going to be it. I praise you for it. Hallelujah. And you know what? He's going to honor your faith and he's going to respond to your persistency as well. Let me ask you about guidance, because that's where we see a lot in the scriptures. We see guidance through dreams. Uh, how about yourself, your organization, maybe? Uh, what has God done to guide you all through dreams? I rely heavily on the Lord to speak to me through dreams for guidance. Uh, there was a period of time where I was going into Africa and Europe and uh, the Caribbean a lot, always traveling overseas for ministry. And I remember I had these uh, maybe three or four invites to different countries, and I was seeking the Lord about what nation to go to next. And in a dream, I saw like a safari-looking land, and I saw the words Namibia. Namibia was not on my radar. I didn't have any friends that had been to Namibia for ministry. And so none of the invites was to Namibia. So I said, well, Lord, if you want me to go to Namibia, open the door. Within a week, an apostle that was from Namibia that I had met in Kenya, I met him in Kenya, invited me to Namibia. And so I knew that God's timing was for me to go to that nation. That is amazing. You know, I'm going to assume that you have many God-given dreams. Can you think of a dream right now that you've had recently that is about the church or about America or about something that is coming this year? Yes, I had a dream with uh, these double scales of judgment. And the scales were arrayed in a way that I've never seen before. And the Lord was telling me uh, that there, there's a uh, realignment or shifting that needed to take place at the state levels, but also at the federal or national level. And that there were two things that could happen. We could be shifted into a place of harvest and reward, or we could be shifted into a place of the other side of judgment, which is a divine consequence and some type of breach uh, with the enemy. Because the enemy is Satan, but Satan has to use some type of natural means to attack. Um, and when I say the enemy, there are many enemies that the U.S. has will have some type of opening or breach to do things that we haven't experienced before, at least not in our generation. When so you, we're praying against it as well. Yes. When you were studying for this book about, you know, these supernatural dreams, what surprised you the most when you were studying about dreams? Well, amazingly, um, I actually had a, a TV producer ask me about when I wrote the book, where books that I really consulted. I said, most of it has come from my life experience because I've been dreaming for over 36, 37, 38 years. I'm 42 now. So most of it was through my life experience. But one of the things that really surprised me was um, more so the response to the book. How many people, even in the church, spirit field people, prophetic people, uh, needed answers concerning even some things that I thought was basic. Mm -hmm. And so just the response, the overwhelming response to how many people this book has filled in the blanks for them. 
How would somebody go about interpreting one of the dreams that they had? You know, they saw a man walking across the street with a blue <laughs> shirt. He stopped, looked at the, I mean, how did they go about if they remember <laughs> it clearly, but they don't really have that revelation of what it means? Okay, so there's a few things that you can look into. One, look at the, the feelings that you have in a dream. If you have a feeling of trepidation, a fear of anxiety, that will help you know if it's from the enemy or from God, or, or if it's something that you need to, if it's a dream of caution or warning. Um, the second thing to look at is the activity that's taking place. So if I'm being chased by a dog or wolf, I know that it's probably the enemy, something not good or something I'm running from. But if it's something where I'm victorious or I'm accomplishing a goal, then I know that it's something that the Lord is telling me, motivating me to do. Uh, so for instance, in that particular instance, if I'm walking across the street, it's a man in a blue shirt uh, and he's staring at me. I would ask, because I had a dream one time and I remember, now this is going to sound funny. It was Vincent Chan Chaganti, who was the mob boss of this, <laughs> allegedly, of the Genovese crime family. And I said, Lord, I was asking him for permission to do something. And he said, yes, you have my permission. And I said, Lord, why was he in my dream? And it wasn't for the enemy. The Lord was showing me that he represented an authority figure in the earth, maybe on the dark side, but still. He was like, you know, those mob bosses, when they give a word, their yes is a yes, their no is a no. And so the Lord was telling me, you've asked me about this thing several times, and I'm just using him as a figure to tell you that you have my yes, that I'm going to open that door and that you have permission to walk through that door. And so even people appearing in your dreams, you can ask the question, what do they represent to you? Do they represent an abuser? Do they represent an authority figure? Do they represent um, someone that's an encourager? And when it's someone that you don't know in a dream or you don't recognize, sometimes the person is not as important as the activity that they're doing. That is so good. And you also mentioned in your book, when you have a dream about somebody and you know them, wake up and intercede for them and pray for them and 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 text them and say i'm praying for you yes yes because you know some dreams can be life or death my wife had one uh months ago and in this particular dream she saw one of our uh one of my relatives wife actually get abducted and mm. she told me that night the dream but she got up early that morning and prayed for her and we called the wife and you know what she was in the exact place that my wife saw in the dream the mm. same day we told her get out of there so the husband and, and, and his brother-in-law they drove up to the place and they saw three men with the trunk open in this darkly lit place just in the parking lot for no reason and that's exactly what my wife saw in the dream so these dreams when they come from god some can be life or death and we need to take them serious because it's it's like the voice of god communicating with you and anything the lord wants to share is important and has priority Wow, that that shakes me. Um, will yes. you take a minute, this last minute, and will you just pray for those out there? First of all, they've Absolutely. had a really important dream. They're trying to discern it and unpack it. Uh, number two, they're desiring to have a dream from God. They need div supernatural direction, uh, prophetic vision for their life. Can you just pray for those? Of course. Father, right now in Jesus' mighty name, we pray that the Spirit of the Lord will activate a new realm of dreams that will give provision, answers, instruction, and insight. Let dreams explode in people's lives to bring divine transformation and a new level of intimacy with you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I receive it. Amen. And Thank you. You receive it too. Thank you so much, DeMonte, for this supernatural dimension of dreams. This book is a must have, and we've got to stir up this gift because it is a promise from God in the book of Acts, the book of Joel, and many others. But thank you, DeMonte. Thank you for having me on. Blessings to you. You too. Let's now go over to Sydney and see what's happening on this week's The Glory Hour. And at the end of the program, I'm going to share a God-given dream that I believe might apply for you. We'll be right back.
chaplains. They provide spiritual support for sports teams, the military, hospitals, and even in corporate America. But what about in public schools? With depression, anxiety, and suicide at an all-time high among the youth, Rocky Malloy, the CEO and founder of the National School Chaplain Association, says students need care in the classroom like never before. Chaplaincy is a, a privilege. So on a campus or even in the military, the chaplain is available. They're not forcing themselves on people. He's on the inside. He or she knows what's going on. They are the number one source of intelligence if anything ever goes wrong. Rocky is a former drug smuggling pirate who was saved by divine intervention and is now on a mission providing chaplains for public schools in the U.S. and around the world through his organization. You don't want to miss our very special and timely conversation about the push to bring chaplains into public schools. Coming up on The Glory Hour, you can watch on Cornerstone Television Network's YouTube page. Just go to The Glory Hour. We're also now streaming on Spotify, and I'm telling you, you, if you are a parent, a grandparent, or anyone that has a loved one that is a child or a youth that is in the school system, the public school system, this is something we definitely going to have a conversation about. It's going to be eye-opening. It's going to be life-changing. And we also want to hear from you your thoughts about chaplains in the public school. So I'll see you at the Glory Hour. Well, uh, we have to pray into something that is a, really a difficult situation. Uh, youth with a Mission, YWAM, organization I used to be part of, uh, they, were, uh, they were having a, a group of leaders in Africa come together in Tanzania. They were on a bus and uh, they had a bus accident and 11 people were killed. These are 11 Christian leaders were killed. And it's just so sad uh, and it's so affecting to the church of Africa and uh, Tanzania. And so uh, I just want to pray into this. I know that I was uh, contacted by Megan Bixler. Some of you remember that I interviewed her, uh, Russ Bixler's, uh, our founder's granddaughter. She is, uh, was planning to go to Tanzania with a team and, and uh, before this even happened. And now they're certainly going to uh, minister to the, the people there. So uh, Amy, let's just pray. It's just so yeah, sad. It's so sad. It, it and is. we just thank God that they're with Jesus right now. Right. And we just pray for comfort for the families in Jesus' name. God, yes. we just ask that you wrap yes. your arms around them. Yes. All of their friends and loved ones, the shock, the horror, the, the absence, the loss, the grief. God, we just thank you that you do what you yes. do best and you comfort those who yes. mourn. And Father, I just thank you for that That we as believers, we mourn, but there's that light of hope that they are with you now and they are in eternity and they're in, in heaven. And Tom, if you want to finish. Yeah, and Lord, I just pray for, there are a few that are in the hospital. Some have been released already. Some are in critical condition. And I pray, Father, that they would be raised up, Lord, to go out and do the work. And I, I pray, Father, that you would encourage the church in Tanzania, yeah. encourage the YWAMers in, Can in Tanzania, Lord, that they might be strengthened for the journey uh, after this tragedy. Lord, uh, we, we, we question, where are you in the tragedy? Well, I know that you are in the response to the tragedy. So I pray that their hearts would be strengthened by your Holy Spirit today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So continue to pray for that. We do want to share a scripture with you, and it's going to go right, right into what you wanted to say, Amy. Yeah. Uh, and it's Job 33, 14 through 15. It says this, For God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. He speaks in dreams, in visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they lie in their beds. Well, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Uh, so tell me what you were going to share. I think it's so important that, you know, even in the book of Acts, it says, In the last days, saith the Lord, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. I mean, dreams and visions from heaven, uh, I think should be a part of our life here on earth. It's scriptural, it's biblical, and it's for today. And you know, Tom, s several years ago, you know, I'm, I'm a pastor, right? That God called me into the ministry, yeah. he called me to Pittsburgh. He called us to plant a church and we've been doing it for 27 years. And um, I had a dream and in this dream, I was in a house and there were all adults in the house and the house was so fun. 
and all of the adults were laughing, they were drinking and eating and having the best time and there was music. And I'm, I'm standing there and I hear a room full of babies crying. And I'm looking around, I'm like, Did, nobody hears the babies crying? And I, I, I kept, I would go to one mom or to another dad and nobody heard anything. They were just all enjoying themselves. And I walk and open the door to this room full of babies all in their cribs. They were hungry. They were upset. Their diapers were wet. They needed attention. They needed help. They needed cared for. And when I woke up, the Lord said, take care of the babies. And I wonder how often in the body of Christ, we grow up in God, we're all good, we're going to heaven, it's all good with me, my family's on the boat, we're all love the Lord, we go to church, we do our thing, but we have no concern at all about the babies. First of all, to become a baby means in Christ, that there is a lost person that has found Christ and they have become a new babe in Christ. And so, Tom, I think there is a great responsibility for the, the, the church, the mature ones, the adult ones in the body of Christ to look after and take care of the babies. Because if we don't, we're going to miss a huge harvest of souls. Well, I mean, God definitely was leading you through that dream. And, uh, you know, you and Buck have had this uh, successful, you know, 27 years mm -hmm. of, of ministry um, with a lot of bumps along the way. But you stayed faithful to that yes. vision and to that dream yes. of what God wanted you to do. And, and I think that what's important for us to remember is that we have a supernatural faith. We have a faith that is a faith of power. It is a faith of miracles. It is a faith of signs and wonders. That was the faith that was happening in the, in the uh, book of Acts and in the time of Jesus and in various times throughout scripture. There were these moves of God that were supernatural. God wants to lead yeah. you supernaturally. Yeah. It can be a dream like what Amy had. It can be a word. It can be a vision. It can be uh, the number one way is through scripture, but God is going to lead you. Trust that leading. Trust and believe him for it. He wants you to take care of the babies. He wants you to take uh, uh, ownership of what he shows you. And he's going to bless you in that. But be listening because when you listen, you will hear and you will be led. On tomorrow's Hope Today, discover the keys for raising up your children to follow Christ. Podcaster and author Leanne Mancini provides practical advice to help parents raise their children to stand firm in their faith and live according to God's Word. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.